I'm going to talk about the, the DAG Jose project, which is uh, something I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. Um, I've been funded by uh, Protocol Labs and Ethereum and been working with the folks at uh, Textile and Freebox to get this done. So um, DAG Jose stands for, well, DAG as in IPLD, and then Jose is JSON object signing and encryption. So it's a hard J, but everyone seems to say Jose. So that's, that's how I pronounce it. Um, so what, what is DAG Jose? What's the problem it's trying to solve? I'm going to introduce that. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about how we solve that problem and then specifically about the Go API. And then if we have time, I'll talk about the implementation in Go. So some of this will be quite technical. Uh, I hope it's still interesting. Um, so the way I see it, IPLD uh, and IPFS more generally are about data interoperability. And one of the problems that we run into with public data, so the IPFS network is generally public, is that we want to sign or encrypt data. And at the moment, every application ends up writing their own little mini format to describe how data was authenticated or encrypted. Um, and that reduces the interoperability. Of it. it makes it harder to write code that's generic over how something was authenticated or encrypted. So DAG Jose is an attempt to solve that problem. It's an interoperability standard for authenticated encrypted data. Um, Jose itself is actually an existing standard for authenticated and encrypted data on the web. Um, it's basically uh, a standard JSON representation for uh, authentication or encryption. Um, and there's two, generally speaking, two objects that we care about, JSON Web Signatures, or JWS, and JSON Web Encryption, which is JWE. Um, Web developers will often actually encounter these in the form of JSON web tokens, which are a form of JWS used for authenticating against web APIs. So there's an existing ecosystem of uh, libraries that handle these things. So the idea is just to take this and use it in IPLD, given that there's already an existing ecosystem, there's a lot of standards around it, there's a lot of familiarity with it. Uh, so what do these objects look like? Uh, this is what a JWS looks like. Um, so you have some kind of payload, which is arbitrary, binary data that you're signing, um, and then a series of signatures, which are uh, signatures over that data. Um, and the, the elements of these signatures, um, so you've got the signature itself, which is just the, the bytes of the signature. And then you have some uh, elements, the header and protected header, which effectively represent metadata about that signature, which the implementations can use to uh, figure out how the signature was made and to verify it. Um, so that's, that's authenticated data. And then for encrypted data, very similarly, um, you have a set of defined keys. Um, and then you have the key part of this is the ciphertext, which is the uh, whatever encrypted data you have. Um, and then recipients is a series of uh, specific to each recipient um, data, which can be used to decrypt the data. So in, in both cases, the, the details of the actual shape of these objects is not necessarily that important for this talk. The main thing is that there is a standard format for how these objects are laid out. Um, and it has to all be URL safe JSON. So everything is base64 URL encoded. Um, and these are generally pretty well supported. Uh, there's also um, different serializations of these. So these two forms here are called the general serialization. There's a flattened serialization where you can uh, if you only have one recipient here, for example, or if you only have one signature in a JWS, you can hoist the keys of the signature of the recipient out into the top level. And then there's a compact serialization, which is designed for use in URLs. But uh, we don't particularly care about those. We can encode the general serialization fairly efficiently because we're using Seabor instead of JSON. Um, and we can losslessly convert to and from in the client library. So we just use the general serialization. Um, so I guess the, the first question here is how do we actually represent these Jose objects in IPLD? Um, and this is, there's a spec for this, uh, that's the link I've just posted there. But um, it's fairly straightforward, really. We have a, a multi-codec, which indicates that a CID refers to some Jose data. Um, and then to actually encode a Jose object, either a JWS or a JWE into, into IPLD, we, uh, we just encode it in Seabor rather than JSON. And because we have a bytes type in Seabor, we directly use that rather than base64 URL encoding uh, any payload data. And then we add these two extra requirements, which I'll talk about a little bit in a minute, which is that 
if it's a JWS, the payload is the bytes of a CID. Uh, and if it's a JWE, the ciphertext is uh, decrypts to the bytes of a CID, uh, which seems like an odd requirement and I'll get back to it. But just to make that concrete, if we were to look at uh, this JWS, to encode this uh, in IPRD, we encode it in Seabor. Everywhere you see base64 URL, you can basically replace that with bytes. Um, so uh, why are we using CIDs for the payload and the ciphertext? So um, one of the things that almost any spec that deals with encryption or authentication will do is define some kind of canonical way of encoding uh, JSON or whatever your data structure is so that verifiers can reproduce it um, in the same way as the, the signer so that they can they can verify the data structure and this is quite complicated um, but we can kind of avoid doing that because we already have IPLD as a way of encoding arbitrary data so we just use that um, and also applications if they're using this this data they already have IPLD infrastructure or deserializing and, and serializing into IPLD data so they can just reuse that um, so by saying you have to sign a CID or you have to encrypt a CID we don't we don't have to worry about specifying how you structure your data um, the obvious objection to this well there's two one is say you're say you're downloading a JWS uh, you would have to get the JWS object from APFS and then you have to like decode the CID of the payload and then do another network request to get that object. Um, or probably even more concerning is if you have a, an encrypted object, if you're, if the plain text is a CID, then that seems like it would mean that you're putting the, the plain text on the network somewhere and all you're encrypting is, is the hash of it. Um, but we can use the identity multi-hash to avoid this problem. So what that means is, um, if you have a CID which uses the identity multi-hash, then what that means is that the bytes of the object that the CID refers to are actually, we, we don't hash them at all. We just directly include the bytes in the CID. Um, so that means that we can, we can create an identity multi-hash for our JWS or our JWE and include that directly in the, the object that's downloaded. And that means that we in the block, and that means that we don't have to make these extra network requests, and it means we don't have to put the plain text of a JWE on the network. Um, so that's kind of an overview of, of how we, of what the spec says about how we encode this work. What I've been working on is a Go implementation of this. Um, so you can download this link, and I think there's also a link in chat. Yep. Um, all this library handles is serialization to and from JSON and to and from IPLD. There are other libraries which are really quite mature, which can be handled, can be used to handle crypto. Um, so the main thing this is just concerned with is just a very simple API to convert to and from JSON and IPLD. Uh, so here's what reading um, a JWS looks like. So we create a, a CID. This is using the Go IPLD Prime library, which is a, I think, reasonably new library for interacting with IPLD data in Go. Um, so we create a CID. Um, we assume that there's already some data on the network that the CID points to that is uh, a DAG Jose JWS object. Um, and then the interesting piece of code, I guess the entry point to this library, in the middle of the page right there, you see this DAG Jose .load Jose function. Um, so the first argument to that is the CID that we've just created. Uh, the, the two context arguments are not particularly interesting for this. Uh, and then the, the fourth argument is uh, an implementation of IPLD.loader, which basically is anything that knows how to get data from IPFS. Um, and this is, uh, this is something that anyone using the IPLD Prime library would already have on hand. Um, so the, the result we get from that function is a, is a union of both JWS and JW objects, because the, the spec doesn't determine, doesn't tell us what kind of object is in, in the CID. We know that it's either a a JWS or a JWE. So we then have this as JWS method, which will return not nil if the, the object is a JWS. And if, if it isn't JWS, there's another one called as JWE. Uh, and then at the bottom, we can see here, we're just printing out the general JSON serialization of the JWS. So that's where your integration point with a third party library will sit. So you can, you can then pass that general serialization in Go Jose, or you can uh, pass it yourself or hand it off to any other third party services that can handle 
JWS object. Um, and writing looks broadly similar. Um, you say you, you've signed some data using the GeoHase library, for example, uh, and you have you then have the general JSON serialization of that JWS. You can pass that using GeoHase, so that first uh, line is the entry point here. Um, and then this uh, on the fifth line, we've got this GeoHase build Jose link method, which is um, effectively a wrapper around Go IPOD Prime's link builder. Um, Again, the important part is the last two arguments. The first one is we upcast our JWS to a Jose object for the same reason as we have to downcast. Um, and we give it an implementation of something that knows how to store raw RPFS block data on the network. Um, and the result of that is, uh, is a CID, uh, which we can, we can do whatever we want with. Um, so that, that's the, the API of the library that I've been working on. It's fairly simple. Um, there is a helper library I'm working on, which it handles things like um, encoding things in an identity multi-hash um, and various utility functions to do with encryption and decryption that just make the user experience a bit easier. Um, and I was hoping to get onto the some implementation details, but it's coming up to quarter two, so I think I'll probably stop there. Um, although for the last week of this, I guess something that's kind of fun and exciting that I'm working on is uh, is sort of tying everything together and making sure that we can store DAG Jose objects um, using PowerGate uh, via Ceramic, which is a, a project three blocks of working on that is actually using the stuff in Angular via the JavaScript implementation.